Hey, and thank you for clicking play. Now, this is a quick one today. Um, the Amiga is chugging away there and it is linked up nicely to the modern PC that I got off Adam. But there's a bit of a difference because I'm no longer having to use this, this RS, uh, this um, serial to USB adapter and that makes transferring things a, a lot smoother. <sighs> Let's have a look at what came in the post and what I've done to make this happen on a modern PC. Okay, a thing has arrived um, and it's a thing I ordered off eBay and it's for the new PC, but there is a retro, an Amiga related slant to it. Um, and I'm quite impressed that it arrived because I ordered the cheapest one I found on, on eBay. So this thing cost $5 Australian. Uh, in fact, it was $5.50, including international shipping. <laughs> so <laughs> they literally charged 50 cents. So let's just say this has cost about £2.25, uh, two, sorry, £2.50-ish £2 is um, what this item has cost to get it here. And so being that cheap, I thought, well, look, if I get scammed out of that mount, you know, that's that's just one of those things. Um, I'll take the punt. So take the punt I did. And here it is. And the funny thing is, as soon as I ordered it, the cost of the shipping was instantly explained as I ordered it, where are we now? May. So I ordered it early to mid-April. And as soon as I ordered it, the estimated arrival time was mid to end of June. I'm not even joking. I'm like, oh, okay, well, if it ever turns up, it turns up. And here it is, just in a bag. It's literally just in a bag. <laughs> There's nothing. So if this thing is in here undamaged, I'm quite impressed. Oddly, it's now even cheaper on the eBay store. I'm sure I'm just being overly paranoid. Let's have a look at <laughs> what I've even got in here. So this has come straight from Hong Kong. They never want to hear from me again. So the question is, is it what I ordered? Then the next question is, is it damaged? And then the question after that is, does it work? All right, that's nothing else in there. Here it is in another bag. Oh, so there we go. I'm making a fuss over nothing. It's clearly double bagged, um, which is fine. All right, there's a barcode sticker on that side. So I'm just going to peel that off that way just in case that's further tracking information i doubt it is but i'm just going to open that like that and let's see if i can get this puppy out some of you may have guessed if you remember the when i took a look inside the pc that i got off adam so what we have here, this is for a modern PC and my the motherboard in the PC that I got off Adam just happens to have the right headers because what we've got here, and I can get ones locally, but they only do one or the other. And that's why I wanted this one. Just make sure you're seeing that properly. There we go. Fantastic. I'm quite excited to see if this works. I'm sure it does, because it's a fairly simple thing. And why not just shove it in a bag and make the postage cheap? That's fantastic. So as long as this works, I'm happy. What a fantastic price. And it's the price it should be, really. Um, so in case you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, we have a nine pin D um, serial connector, and we have a 25 pin um, parallel connector. So this for plugging crazy things like old dot matrix printers up to a modern PC. And this will be so that I can, without having to use a USB adapter, I can do the transferring of ADFs between the PC and the Amiga. So there we go. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, let's move that to one side. And let's, <laughs> there's the beastie. Um, let's see what we're dealing with here. Put that there. Oh. Um, if, for those of you that hadn't watched, um, one of my nephews on my wife's side um, sold me this machine for um, 
$150. It's not a retro machine, it's a modern machine. i5 with a nice graphics card. Fantastic. And that's what <laughs> we are, because I'm crazy, and as you can see, proper gigabit motherboard. Really nice setup. And what I'm interested in doing, it's probably going to have to go there, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. Well, there's nothing to it, it's not really going to impact on these fans in any way. I should be able to. So the headers are. Are you seeing that? I don't know if you're seeing that. Um, yeah, you should be seeing that. Digital zoom, because you know. So the headers. Oh, that's USB, <clears throat> LPT and COM, there. That's what those are. COM or serial for RS232. Let's move it that way a bit. And LPT, digital zoom, how fantastic is digital zoom. Not only do you get closer, but you get more pixelated. Fantastic. The amount of people that don't understand that that's how zoom works on a lot of these devices. Anyway, um, right, that's coming out. I do like these black. For those of you new to the channel, that's my grandfather clock. Right, so that's gonna go in there, but let's just make sure, ironically, the longer of the two cables is the one that's gonna be closest, but that's fine. <clears throat> Com's going to go in there. As I s explained to my, my boys when they built their first PC, that I brought home from work for them and dismantled it, explained what all the parts are and said put it back together. And they're only about, I don't know, maybe eight, maybe ten. It was the Pentium 4 that I still got. Um, so it was their first machine really, and it's a case of, I explained to them, I said, look, things generally will only go in the right hole. And that was, given the age they were, said without any hint of innuendo. Um, and it's still true. Those, there was only two logical places. Do you like my cable management? The cables are inside the case. So I think that's fine. It's not a Windows case. It's not a Windows case. It's a Windows PC. It's not a windowed case. So if you've come here to see me put modern equipment in a modern PC, you may want to find another channel. If you've come here for to see me restore retro equipment, you may want to find another channel. If you've come here to see somebody do what any other numpty could do, you're in the right place. Right, there we go. That's it. Cables are in. Who knows if they're right? I mean, who knows if it works? But that's touching the Wi-Fi card, but that's just the cable, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, and look, I mean, how would you cable manage those anyway? They're bloody ribbon cables. What could I do? Not much. Screw it. <laughs> it's done. That's in. That's as complicated as that gets. Okay, some dodgy Blair Witch video now. There's the PC back in place. Um, I've got the torch or the camera on. Because the bit I've got to show, obviously, is... So here's the USB adapter that I was using. Here's the other end of the RS-232 cable that is the other end, bar an adapter that I made, is plugged into the back of the Amiga. See another video I've done on all of that stuff. Just look it up. Um, but this is going to go. This is the exciting bit. This is a modern PC. We've got a 9-pin. I say exciting, just for idiots like us. We've got a 9-pin RS-232 cable. And that is going into on a new PC. Well, newish. I find this amusing. I find this beautiful, actually. That is going into a port on a modern motherboard. That 
it's a thing of bizarreness, but a thing of beauty. There we go. Okay, so I'm back on the PC now. Everything's plugged in. The Amiga's on. You might not be able to hear it. That's the click of the drive. <laughs> I just saw it register in OBS, so you might be able to hear it actually. So that's the click of the Amiga drive. Um, and Amiga, so I've got Workbench and I've got um, Amiga Explorer open on that. So what I'm going to have to do now is, in theory, we're plugged into COM1 now. So I'm going to have to tell Amiga Explorer that. So I'm going to go in here, go, uh, is it under connection maybe? Oh, that says offline. I'm going to go serial. But actually, I'm going to tell it. See, that says COM3, which is what that USB device was acting as. I'm going to tell it with COM1. Should be correct. There we go. I'm going to open Amiga Explorer. What we should see is the contents of the Amiga. Now, in Amiga Explorer 9, well, I'm not sure exactly when they changed this, but it's certainly part of 9. Um, when you actually want to overwrite a disk, you have to go into virtual files. So that's where I'm going to go in there. Now it's shown as empty, so that's interesting. I'm going to pop a disk in the drive. And hit F5. And there we go. So the disk I put in there is this info, and you can see that is there. So that's fantastic. I'm happy that that is seeing 100% the Amiga, and you can see there it's mounted sysinfo. So what happens if you drag an ADF into there, it tries to copy the ADF into the onto the disk. It doesn't try and overwrite the disk image. Big difference, that's why you have to go into virtual files to do that in this version of Amiga Explorer. Um, and there's the contents of my RAM disk. You can see there that's where I loaded Amiga Explorer from on the Amiga itself. So I'm very happy. Um, how do we doubly know? We're definitely looking at the Amiga. Well, when I put that disk in, that showed up. But let's try this. I'm going to rename this info. Why not? Because, you know. So on the Amiga, I'm renaming this. And now, if I F5. So that was on the Amiga that I renamed that. Can I rename it from here? I wonder. Let's just try and, I mean, who cares? Who cares, right? Because at the end of the day, I could rewrite this disk anyway. Rename here. Nope. No, nope, that doesn't work. Um, so I have to rename it on the Amiga. So on the Amiga. Not initialize, <laughs> initialize it. Well, I've got the ADF again somewhere anyway. So on the Amiga. Right, so it's showing on my Amiga as sysinfo, and now sysinfo. Fantastic. And if I eject the disk on the Amiga, hit F5 here, and it's gone. There you go. It is working. It is working. We have an RS-232 cable. I don't know if anybody else finds that even the least bit interesting. Fantastic. There you go.